Hi parents and grade nine boys and girls. The purpose of this video is to complement the subject choice handbook that you may have already read. And so I'm just going to give you a few extra insights that will hopefully help you with your subject choices. So as you all know, in grade eight and nine, people study natural sciences, and you will all know that you've studied biology, chemistry, and physics as part of natural sciences, all three. So now in grade 10, you would either choose life sciences or physical sciences. So if you're interested in the biological part of natural sciences, then you would pick life sciences. But if you want to continue with chemistry and physics, you would then pick physical sciences. Life sciences then deals with the study of living organisms, as opposed to physical sciences, which deals with the study of non-living matter. So one of, the, one of the questions that is often asked is what is the difference between biology and life sciences? So biology focuses mainly on gathering detailed knowledge of structures and functions in living organisms, whereas in life sciences, there is obviously plenty of emphasis on building a solid foundation of knowledge, but there is also emphasis on critical thinking and applications of the knowledge and some of the ethical issues that are involved. And so I would say that there is much more of a focus on our responsibility to use the knowledge that we have for the benefit of the living world around us. There are three components to the life sciences syllabus. At the center of the syllabus is the obvious building of a solid foundation of content knowledge and terminology. The second component deals with important applications and some of the issues related to the content. And then the third component deals with the practical aspects of carrying out scientific investigations and the presentation and the analysis of data. So what will you learn about? So instead of boring you with long lists of all of the different topics that we study, I've just picked a few that I mentioned here. Um, so in grade 10, we start off with the basics and we start off with the um, basic unit of life, which is the cell. And from there, we move on to some of the important processes that support life that you would have already learned about, such as synthesis and respiration, for example. Some of the favorite um, topics that I have around the grade 10 syllabus have to do with nutrition and the functions of the different food types in the body. We also talk about how plants and animals are cloned. And um, one of my favorites is the discussion around whether or not we should clone a human. In grade 11, we move on to many of the systems in the human body, which leads to discussions around sports injuries, the effects of drugs on the nervous system, sleep, learning, and also understanding ADHD. And then in the trick, we get to dig a bit deeper into some of the cutting edge research that is happening in the world today around gene therapy, the genetic modification of crops and organisms, and those also lead to interesting discussions on those topics. Um, such as should we be editing genes, for example. It's obviously a bit late now, as that's already been done, but it's definitely something, to work, something worth thinking about. So what can you expect from life sciences lessons? So in class, there is obviously plenty of content and terminology in the subject, but there's also lots of interesting discussion, as I've said, and then group work. You will also have practical lessons, where you'll learn to work with laboratory equipment and chemicals, you'll do some dissections and you'll build some models. And then you can also expect a field trip or two and our outing to Kenton where we use different sampling methods to study the biodiversity along our stunning Eastern Cape coastline has become a favorite. You'll develop a wide range of very important skills in life sciences. And I've highlighted some of these here. Um, but just to highlight one, and that is the ability to evaluate the reliability of different sources of information. We all know how important that is, and it's become increasingly important as the world becomes more and more information dense, and we have so much that we have to sift through on a daily basis. How can you do well in life sciences? Well, as with all subjects, you have to pay attention in class. The content is covered fairly quickly, so if you fall behind, catching up is hard work. Um, if you can also get into the habit of revising the content often and always doing your prep, you will, that will definitely be an advantage. 
And if you really want to go the extra mile, read beyond the material that we give you. Your teachers will love you. And then finally, do you need life sciences for any careers? And the simple answer here is that life sciences is seldom a requirement for a degree, but it is most certainly recommended for any career involved with living things, which is pretty much all of them. But obviously any in the medical field, research such as biotechnology and others such as environmental law and tourism and so on. But honestly, for those of you that are not sure of what your career path is at this point, the skills that you learn in life sciences would be beneficial for any career and in fact for life in general. So good luck with your decision making and hopefully we'll see many of you, many of you in life sciences next year.